Uh, Your Honor, if you don't mind, we'd like to push that uh, to the April meeting, uh, mainly so that we can. Uh, table. And so that would not have to resubmit anything at this point, then it sure. would be on the agenda for April. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. and then I'll have it calculated. Yes, correct. Yes. So okay. I'll take that as a motion. I, Go ahead. I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay, I, I just sure. wanted to make sure it wasn't lost, and I knew I was coming today. And I felt that uh, perhaps if we could address everything, I wouldn't have to bother you again. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that and understand that. Uh, but I'll take that as a motion to the table. I hear seconds. I'll second. Okay, motion to the table. Uh, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed nay. Very good. Okay, next, uh, Forest Warren Human Services salary increase. And this, uh, we'll turn it over to the next lady. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Rhonda Tipton cannot be here today because she has another meeting. Um, so in your packet, I put in there the um, ARPA funding letter. Um, they are being awarded $50,000 um, in money. Um, this initiative is tentatively supposed to end on March 31st, 2024. However, they do feel that they could get it further than that. Um, so at this time, there's been some extra duties added on to three individuals at Human Services. Um, John Kale, Stacy Lehman, and Tammy Shippey are all absorbing some additional duties, and in the packet, um, those are all I've run. I have to post it in an email so that all of you can see. Um, she's requesting um, an additional $3,000 per each individual to come out of this ARPA funding um, to fund that increase. Um, going forward, um, we did check with the, uh, the Human Services Fiscal Department and they would be able to carry on this increase should the funding not be continued. <clears throat> and if you want me to go over some of the um, additional duties on the email, I can. So, just to clarify, they're taking on additional duties in their scope of work, which I understand. Yes. And there's a one-time bonus, or, I'm sorry, a one-time grant proposal. Yes, a grant, yep. But you're asking that this, their scope of work permanently change, or you're asking for a bonus to cover it? No, this would be a permanent change. These duties are going to continue on. Um, there's a good possibility that they will get this funding in the future, but of course there's no guarantee. Um, so Rhonda did check with fiscal and human services to make sure that it could be sustained in the budget going forward once these funds run out. And that is the case. Um, and these duties will continue to be with these individuals. So this would be a permanent pay increase. For these positions, and yes. these positions are what? Um, so it would be, um, let me see, so they are the, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what their things are? Um, Tammy Shippey is the supervisor for ID. Uh, John Kale is also a supervisor underneath her. Um, Stacy Lehman, I believe. She's not a supervisor, but she is a coordinator. It's a coordinator yeah. position. Yes. Okay, so They're all in ID, but it's the PSC. So we have the ID supervisor in one of the other positions? Can't. They're all they're all in similar mm -hmm. capacities. Yes. In intellectual all, mm -hmm. disabilities. Right. Um, the, the reason that, that one of the big reasons that this is focused on non union is, is that uh, the funding can't technically be used for union because of the contract and some of the other things. So um, that's part of it. The other part of it is is that the, their uh, responsibilities as a result of changing the duties and then also the, the pandemic and a lot of the stuff that they had to take on as a result of that has increased. So um, all three of these folks work incredibly hard for the agency and I would highly recommend that we move forward with these increases, especially since Ron has already figured out how to fund them going forward beyond the ARPA funding. Okay, my problem is that it has the name but we don't have the positions. So we're not, mm -hmm. we're not increasing this person's salary, right? Increasing That's the position. position. Yes. So what I'm asking for is what those positions are. Um, and also, how did the three thousand dollar? Where did that number come from? Ron submitted that to me. So if you get, you're getting a fifty thousand dollar grant, and then mm -hmm. I guess I'm just wondering how the three thousand dollar came about. How's that? I think they looked at the duties and. and try to come up with a fair amount. Um, I know that she also looked at 
the minimum and maximums for each position because remember they're under merit, so each position has a minimum and a maximum, and so she tried to make sure that they were still um, in line with that. Is there an additional two thousand dollars involved in this? The family driven support services. Say anything about that part. I just wonder if, I guess what I'm asking is, if by this letter, it looks like they could be giving 52000 total. Um, we don't have to decide this today. I would make a recommendation to table it until we get the actual titles and make sure that Ron is here at the next uh, meeting to describe what the position increases are. Okay. Motion to table. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded to table. So on to the debatable. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion to table. Accepted. Uh, creation of Deputy Director of Planning and Zoning. Dan, did you want to leave that? Lisa. <laughs> Which one? Sure. Sure. I can start. Uh, Dan and I have been working on a succession plan for his office as he has or is not retiring shortly and he himself is looking at retirement in 2023. So we are concerned because his office is involved in so many crucial plans for the county that we would like a training plan to be available um, for his successor. So while discussing that we came up with a solution of creating a deputy director's position that would um learn all i mean we wrote down some of the items that dan does but we know that there is even more these are some of the most critical ones um we would like to see i don't know if i can say this we would like to see um, Mr. Lyon put in, you know, um, apply for and be moved into that position because of his experience. He would also continue to do the zoning work. Um, we have a proposal that that would begin May 1st. That was just a date that we chose so we could work out the finances of it. And if that was the case, um, he, this is a union position. Both the um, the zoning officer, excuse me, and the deputy director would be union positions. There would be a pay change um, to move into that title. And um, so for 2022, the wage increase would be $2,100 plus the taxes. Um, so not significant. We did budget for an administrative position in that department. Um, so we could take the funds from that area to cover for 2022 and then budget appropriately in 2023. Some of the things that I would like to uh, have Michael take on, <laughs> you know he's been short answer for a long time, um, but um, move the subdivision processing uh, piece of it into Michael's uh, hands. Uh, he would also serve as an alternate for me for the Pennsylvania Laws Planning Team, the Northwest Planners Group, of uh, Northwest Commission, the County Commissioners Planning uh, uh, Association, and the, and the COG. Now, I have been bringing uh, Michael with me to the COG meetings because he's anxious to learn uh, as much as he can about the inner workings of the department. But I also want to uh, put him in a more active role in the development of the county's comprehensive plan that we're currently working on, as well as the hazard mitigation plan update that will be coming up um, sometime here beginning of next year. We also have to update the county's stormwater uh, management plan, which is a five-year uh, renewal process every five years. Uh, we have municipalities that are currently under the county zoning ordinance that um, when they have a land development that, that meets the requirements of a, uh, a minor land development in the eyes of the subdivision ordinance, it falls on my department to be able to, to review those and then um, make um, recommendations on to uh, the developers and so forth. So some of those things I would like to uh, move into uh, Michael's responsibility to take some of the loads off of, of mine. Uh, I have situations where I have to make a decision, do I attend this or attend that in a day's time because of, of um, my uh, 
a heavy schedule and so forth. So this would lighten the load a little bit for me, but also give Michael an opportunity to learn more about the uh, inner works of working with the department to be outside of the zone uh, window. Very good. So would that be the rate of the increase in the rate of the starting rate for that position, no matter who? Yeah, yes, the question would be, is this deputy rate the normal deputy rate? It's the 1629, which is the normal deputy rate in the contract, yes. Okay. One thing I also meant to mention, there are a number of counties that uh, have deputy directors, deputy planning directors, but they have Crawford, there's a couple of examples. Um, and depending on the counties, are, they're, they're configured differently depending on the needs of the county. Regardless, the motion would be to create a deputy director position at the contract rate. Yes. Any questions on that? Maybe there's a motion. I make a motion to create a deputy director position for planning and zoning department. The collective bargaining agreement rate. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Can I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. So again, this would be even better than budget neutral because what we were talking about was before would be taking the budget administrative mm -hmm. system position and filling it. And instead of that, we would be creating this deputy director. Okay. So I guess the question that I have right is that we're going to have we're trying to fulfill the zoning officer position, right? Or is it or is the idea that he's going to be functioning? He would still roles? continue on as the county zoning officer mm -hmm. uh, for now. Yeah, I mean, I, so I, I'll support it either way. I, I think that eventually, and sooner rather than later, we should fill the zoning officer position and have you have a deputy director. Um, it's my opinion that Dan Glotz, through his a ridiculous will and hard work has uh, covered over the fact that he's uh, insanely overworked, uh, underappreciated, and frankly has way too many responsibilities. And uh, it's a testament to him as a person, but at the same time, like strategically, the planning and zoning department needs more resources, like just across the board, in my opinion. All of the grant funding, all the funding that we try to get uh, kind of begins, you know, for any kind of development project there. All the planning that we do, you know, trying to coordinate with municipalities happens in planning and zoning. So I would be in favor of, on top of this, filling the zoning officer position. Um, that, so I would just say that, but in the meantime, I'm more than happy to be supportive of the deputy director position down there. Well, we're not taking away the zoning officer position. No, you have to have one by law because we have a zoning ordinance. So mm -hmm. he would still maintain that responsibility, but um, his role would be expanded a little bit with the compensation that's going with it. Well, we can refill it whenever the budget allows. Mm -hmm. Our proposal would suggest that we would hire a new zoning officer in 2023 so that Michael has time to learn and also train, and we would have it budgeted for. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Any other questions? Any debates? Very good. The motion, I believe, was to agree to the director of position planning and zoning at the collective bargaining agreement rate. No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, appointment of Sick Bank. Uh, I believe the bylaws of the sick bank require that the salary board through these. Yes. Uh, there's a list. Sorry, I don't see it. Oh, no. Oh, you're right. Um, can I read them to you? Or yes. Um, so the committee would be Kathy Lebon, Kim Carlson, Amy Hamsey, Michelle Cantrell, and Emily Poole, and all to would be Jim Bromnick and Paula Craig. Catch your elbows. No. <laughs> you go slow. I can repeat, yes. Um, Kathy Lebon, Kim Carlson, Amy Hampsey, Michelle Cantrell, Emily Poole, 
and alternates would be Jen Thelman and Paula Carr. Excuse me, what was Jen's last name? Fromneck, it's F-R-O-M-K-N-E-C-H-T. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion to make those appointments to the sick deck? I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made a second in discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Nice. Any nays? Very good. Um, so this was for student services. Yes. Are there other vacancies within the courthouse? No, not at this time. No. Okay. Well, at this juncture, I'd ask if there's any cause for executive session. I'm not aware of one. No. 